being here and receiving so much love is just amazing. They have been what has saved my son's life and our life, really. If we went from the operating room during the C-section to the nest, we were winning. I never felt so comfortable in a hospital that I've never been at before, just with the interactions of the doctors, the nurses, and the staff. This January, it will be, oh gosh, nine years? Nine years since my transplant. Hello and welcome to Miracles from Mott, Michigan Answers for Kids. I'm Tati Amara. Today is certainly a day to be thankful for many things, especially the University of Michigan Health CS Mott Children's Hospital. Every day, teams of dedicated people are changing children's lives in extraordinary ways. From advanced technologies and breakthrough treatments to leading edge surgeries, the leaders and the best at Mott Children's Hospital provide comprehensive, specialized health care for children every day. In the next half hour, we're going to introduce you to some special families who are direct benefits of this pediatric expertise. We'll also talk to some of those specialists who are truly making a difference. We're really so fortunate to have one of the nation's best children's hospitals recognized by U.S. News and World Report year after year right here in Michigan. Of course, none of the extraordinary work done at C.S. Mott Children's Hospital can be made possible without help from donors like you. As a not-for-profit organization, they depend on generous gifts from their supporters. So today we are asking for your donation by simply scanning the QR code that you see on your screen. And in fact, our friends at Kroger Company of Michigan have generously agreed to match all donations pledged today. Please donate now so that your funds can be doubled. We hope these stories that we share with you today inspire you as much as they have inspired us. My story begins when I was 18 years old. Um, I found a lump on my neck and went through a series of tests. I was leading up to graduation, my senior prom, and um, after an array of tests, um, it came back as Hodgkin's lymphoma, stage two. Uh, so my mom rushed me here to Mott Children's Hospital ER where they did more testing, said I was going to need chemotherapy and all of this right around graduation time. Um, luckily I was able to still perform at my last dance recital and go to prom and graduate and I spent the whole summer and the first semester of my college, my freshman year of college, going through chemotherapy. After six months, they told me I was in remission and my life kind of carried on. And I transferred to Eastern Michigan University to start my nursing career. And three weeks into classes there is when I relapsed with stage four. Um, and then had to come back here and I received a bone marrow transplant, went through more chemotherapy, which was a lot more intense than the first time. Got through that and now I'm here. <laughs> Ever since I was young, I wanted to be a nurse. I didn't know what kind of nurse at the time. And when I got sick and relapsed and was on that on seven for months and months at a time, I realized that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a pediatric oncology nurse. And I spent my 21st birthday in the hospital. I was crying and upset. And um, what got me through it was looking out of my, my window and seeing the little kids, and I've said this a thousand times, but seeing the little kids outside of my room, walking around with their IV poles, five-year-olds, or riding their little tricycles in the hallway, and I thought to myself, if they can do it, I can do it. I'm 21 years old, I'm an adult, <laughs> I can do it. And they were the ones that got me through it. They were the ones that, on days where I wanted to give up and just say, I'm done, I don't wanna do this anymore. Sorry, I haven't talked about this in a long time. Um, <laughs> the kids were the ones that pushed me to, to finish treatment and to be where I am today. And without them, I wouldn't have my one-year-old son that I have now, and I wouldn't be where I am today. And I'm, I'm so, so lucky to not only 
you know, have gone through that and met the nurses that took care of me, but also have worked with the nurses that have taken care of me. And now I work with the physicians that took care of me. And um, it, so it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing to come full circle. My favorite thing about working at CS Mott Children's Hospital is coming to work every day and seeing the little victors and knowing that I played a part in caring for them and helping them move on with their journey and, and it's just a great place to work. If you would like to help make a difference in a child's life at CS Mott Children's Hospital, please scan the QR code that you see on your screen or go to our website, mottchildren.org. We had always been measured as one baby going in, so that ultrasound, we were really prepared. We had a piece of paper where we were going to have the gender written down so we could have a reveal. And then the tech put the camera away and you know we knew right away something yeah. was wrong. And then when the doctor came in, she just she turned off the ultrasound and didn't tell us why right away. And we were like, well, what is going on? And she said, well, you're having twins, but they're conjoined twins. And you know, basically in the same the, sentence. The said, statistics aren't in your favor, yeah. you know. The best thing she did was she referred us to U of M. I met the Irwins when they were 21 weeks pregnant, and uh, they had seen another obstetrician, and they came to the Fetal Diagnosis and Treatment Center, and we did other uh, more sophisticated diagnostic testing, including a, a fetal MRI. And the first meeting was very emotional because, you know, the family, of course, <coughs> wanted hope. And based on uh, the initial imaging, uh, we were able to offer them that hope. Conjoined twins are extremely rare and many don't survive. But what we noticed with the Irwin twins is from the beginning, it seemed feasible that we could safely separate them. Uh, they had separate hearts, all of their organs were separate. They did share a liver, but it appeared early on like we could separate the liver in the middle and they would still uh, do extremely well. We had to rely on uh, radiologists to develop these uh, remarkable 3D models from CT scans where we could see all the organs, we could see the chest wall, we could see the liver anatomy, and all of that was crucial in the planning of the separation. We always had asked, well, are they going to need skin grafts or, you know, if we get to the point of separation, how, and they said, oh, well, they'll grow their own skin. We'll put tissue expanders in mm -hmm. and they'll literally grow their own skin. Um, so they didn't have to have any, any kind of skin grafts or anything like that. It was an incredibly emotional moment for everyone in the operating room when finally the last cut was made and they were separated from one to two infants. Um, and uh, I, I think it was really pretty miraculous. Uh, but then we had this all choreographed. We had to then get to work with our two surgical teams, and it took longer to do the reconstruction than it did to do the separation. One aspect of the separation that I was very concerned about, and many members of our team were, is they didn't have a true sternum. So we had to recreate their chest wall with titanium plates. And we really didn't know how well their chest would work in terms of breathing. And uh, it's just remarkable. Those, those plates are still there and they're running around and uh, doing really great. It was really cool to walk in, not only to see them in separate beds, but the, the care team pulled some amazing strings and thought about their recovery and put both girls in the same room at the same time. So that was a big thing for us that we that really was... tried, we really, really wanted to make happen was having both twins in one room just because for their recovery, being able to see each other as they woke up. And we actually didn't find out until we were up there that they were gonna do that. Yeah. So that was something they worked really hard on that they hadn't done before and we thought was 
yeah, the, really, really special. The, so. the computer tech teams were pretty awesome in that they could figure out a way to split signal for the monitors uh, so that you can have, because each room is really only set up for one patient, especially in the ICU, yeah. Yeah. so that they could figure out um, the, the monitoring for like bed A and bed B um, so that they could both recover together. That was really special. Honestly, it was a Herculean effort by so many people at Mott and von Voigtlander who participated in this planning. I don't know how we could ever say thank you and have it be suitable for every step of the way that they've been there to support us and think of us or take care of us or take care of our family. You know, thank you just never seems like enough, but it's, it's, we appreciate them more than they know. We are joined now by Luann Thomas Ewald, who is the Chief Operating Officer of C.S. Mott Children's Hospital. Luann, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's great, it's great. So now we've already seen some of the good work going on at the hospital. So what else is new at Mott? Well, we're very excited that for the 17th year in a row, we were named the number one children's hospital in the state of Michigan. And with that, we really want to expand our services close to home for our families and for our kids. So we have entered into a joint venture with Trinity Health Oakland and Pontiac. Um, we have our sister hospitals, Sparrow Health System in Lansing and University of Michigan Health West in Grand Rapids, where we are putting our pediatric services, our physicians, our nurses, our protocols, our quality into these facilities so we can make care easier and more accessible for families. So you're expanding all of this good work. We are. All right. Now, being in the hospital during the holidays sure is tough. So how do you make it special for the kids? It is extremely tough for our children and, and for their families. So we try to make every single day in December as special as it can be. Santa gives us one day a year where he shows up to CS Mott Children's Hospital with his elves, and we go from room to room spreading joy for the kids. We have our own tree lighting at CS Mott Children's Hospital, and we just try to spread joy wherever we can throughout the entire month. I'm sure they appreciate it. Now, how important is community support to your efforts? Um, community support is everything that we do, whether it's um, former patients having pajama drives or having toy drives for our current patients, um, whether it's um, people donating money. And we, use, we do use that money for toys and games and iPads, but more importantly, um, to really help us fund research to really help combat a lot of these pediatric diseases that we are just trying to conquer. It's all awesome, Luann. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Of course. Now just remember everyone, just scan the QR code on your screen to donate today, and our friends at Kroger will match every donation. Hudson last September, we came to the ER because he had a sprained ankle and a fever, which sprained ankles and fevers do not usually coincide, and that had lasted for a week. Um, I just kind of thought it was a fluke, but two failed urgent care visits, and by the time I ran out of Motrin, I knew it was time to come to Mott. And a couple of scary tests later, um, they found that Hudson um, had ALL, B cell, leukemia. You know, I have three boys and sprained ankles and fevers don't go together. And um, like I said, it, it just, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't think it was that. So when they admitted us to the hematology oncology floor, it was pretty gut-wrenching. But we're at, we're at the best place. <laughs> so, and I kept reminding myself that the people travel all over the place to come here and we're so blessed for it to be so close. For the first part of treatment, Hudson was here weekly, maybe sometimes twice a week. And during the holidays last year, I remember I was door dashing food because that was something that we, it was our little thing, we'd door dash food. And um, while he was getting his chemo and one of the child life specialists came up to me and had said, Emily, you need to go upstairs. And I was like, for what? Why would I go upstairs? And she was like, there is this toy room and um, you can shop for your boys. And I was like, oh, I don't need to do that. It's okay, leave that for, you know, people who like are here like inpatient. And she was like, no, you're here all the time. You're here every week. Like, please just go upstairs. 
and I went upstairs and I was like, oh my gosh, what is all of this? And I got to pick a few gifts for each of my kids and just the amount of donors that donated to the hospital, CS Mad Hospital is just phenomenal. Oh, the toy store is just wonderful. Um, it's amazing to see the look on people's faces when they walk in and they see what we have here. Um, due to the generosity of the community, I mean, the donations we get are, are phenomenal. And it's great to see the look on a parent's face when they walk in and they're like, we're gonna have a holiday this year. Because as focused as they are on their child, you know, everything else gets pushed to the wayside. And this gives them an opportunity to come in and shop because they may not have a whole lot of time. You know, and a lot of other things on their mind and this just takes one thing off their plate and helps make the holidays a little bit brighter for them. What's really neat is when we do get donations from outside of the state of Michigan. It's neat to see just the, the impact that MOD has had on people outside of Michigan because we do get a lot of folks from, you know, throughout the United States that come here. People care, they truly care and this hospital makes sure that every family is taken care of. Joining me now is Cameron Barrett, who is the Corporate Affairs Manager for Kroger. Thanks for being here, Cameron. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, we know how important it is for Kroger to give back to the community. Talk with us about how you actively give back. Yeah, so we have 119 stores that make up the Kroger Michigan Division, and one of the things that those stores take pride in is giving back to the communities in which we live and serve. Mm -hmm. Our customers come from these communities, so any time that we can give back to them, it really brings a smile to our face. We actually support over 4,300 nonprofits across the state, but our true passion lies in food insecurity. Last year alone, we provided over 3.4 million meals to local food banks across the state. And again, we love giving back to our communities whenever we have the chance to. That's amazing work. So why is it important for Kroger to then support Mott specifically? Yeah, so when it comes to the support of CS Mott Children Hospital, when you think about the holidays, truly a time for families to come together, make memories, make traditions. And again, those little victors, they're going through some tough times. So what we can do in terms of support, bringing a smile to their face and helping support the medical professionals and the families at CS Ch Mott's Children's Hospital, that's what we're all about. Yeah, now we know that none of this will be possible without your guests. Now I'm one of them because I shop at Kroger and of course your employees. Do you have a special message for them? Yeah, so again, none of this would be possible without our 15,000 plus associates that make up the Kroger Michigan Division and even more importantly, our customers that shop our stores every day. They really make things go around for us, and especially during the holiday season, we just want to say a heartfelt thank you from the Kroger Michigan Division. Thank you for being loyal shoppers and to our associates. Thank you for serving our customers with a full, fresh, and friendly smile every customer, every time. The very true, Cameron. Thank you so much for thank being here. Much. We appreciate you. And remember, all you have to do is scan the QR code on your screen to donate today, and our friends at Kroger will match every donation. Place is a dedicated music therapy clinical space here at CS Mott Children's Hospital. We opened in August of 2022, so we're relatively new. Um, but the mission of the space is really to welcome patients and families um, openly to experience music, whether that's individually, in a group setting, music and technology, learning instruments, songwriting. It's a space really here to provide respite and solace, um, as well as really just to enhance the experience while patients and families are with us. Mateo was born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome and he had a heart transplant in May so he's just recovering from that as well as he got a tracheostomy done um, so recovering from that as well. We've been working with our therapist Malia and she does a lot of uh, Spanish music therapy with him. Mateo really enjoys playing with the instruments and getting to listen to music and playing with the guitar. Um, it's been really cool that she incorporates Spanish, which is Mateo's first language, into music therapy. You know, he doesn't leave the room, so it's just something that he can interact with and just 
have fun with. Mateo really just brightened um, everyone's days when experiencing music therapy. It's been an amazing journey to see how he's responded to music, how it's provided the family connection and comfort. Honestly, they're so amazing. Everyone here is amazing. The music therapist, the doctors, nurses, everyone here has been so kind and nice. And, you know, Mateo loves everyone and everyone here loves Mateo. And they're really like family. Um, and, you know, being away from home has been really hard. But being here and receiving so much love is just amazing. I think music therapy or music specifically is a huge pillar in who we are as individuals. Um, it's something that we can connect to not only individually within oneself but also to others. So I think in an environment especially for children that's unfamiliar, music can be that familiar thing and really can connect us um, and provide opportunities for them uh, to really relate to others in an environment that's really difficult sometimes to do so. Maddie was diagnosed at three months old with epilepsy. She didn't have to take any rescue meds, but the way that her seizures were set up, she had seizures maybe every five minutes. They never went over a minute long, so she, like I said, we didn't need any rescue medicine, but just the thought of her having seizures and a multiple consistent rate all day long was scary. So for me, I guess I was thinking that she was having possibly five to ten but you know after further diagnosis we were finding out what, what several hundred a it day was she, several, was she was having them in her sleep too as soon as she woke up she would have a, an instant seizure and, and fall and i would have to be right there to catch it and stop her from falling you know or flat on her head or downstairs and so it was just real you know me and her was in this together feel like feel like you know i would watch her um noises i would hear i would start to be thinking that was her falling down or you know, it just got to a point where it just got real out of control and we just had to really get some type of solution. And we, we just definitely thankful and blessed that, you know, U of M was our savior, was the one that, you know, answered our prayers and, you know, gave us the support that we needed. Like that, like that, like you're handing me a great big pizza box because I'm starving because it's lunchtime. All right, hold it nice and flat. You know, Maddie had what's called intractable epilepsy. Uh, most individuals who have seizures are regular seizures that we, we call epilepsy are treatable very successfully with medications. But a small number, perhaps a quarter of individuals, will go on to have difficulty with medical control or control with medications. So in those individuals, we look very hard for a focus or a, an area, a specific area in the brain that is causing those seizures. So in, in her situation, the workup or the medical details pointed towards the left parietal area, which is a part of the brain up here where my hand is and um, we needed to be more specific than just that information so Maddie underwent a surgical procedure where electrodes are implanted into the substance of the brain and recordings are made for an individual for a period of time I think she was here for several weeks um, and we wait and play games and try to keep people busy while we're all waiting for a seizure to happen and she had seizures on camera so to speak uh, and that helped us to very precisely identify both where her seizures were, but we can also measure function from those same electrodes. And in Maddie's case, fortunately, the areas of seizure did not overlap with areas of critical function. So that led us to an, a second or separate operation where we could open up the skull and expose the surface of the brain and then map out on the surface electrically where her seizures were coming from and then repeat the mapping of her sensory and motor cortices, which are very close, but fortunately not directly in the same place. And so then I could tailor a resection and remove the parts of the brain that were causing the epilepsy. It helped to, to look how comfortable Madison was when we first got here. She was playful. She was kind of nonverbal for the first couple years. She would try to talk when we got here. So just looking at how she responded to the doctors, that made my heart full because I knew then we were in the right place. We're here today, five years later. You know, she's just a uh, beautiful little girl. You know, she's living her dream. She's doing the things she wants. And so we just couldn't be more thankful or, you know, just 
celebrate every day just to know when we wake up where we came from it, it's just been it's just been so great of a, a, a opportunity just to see her grow and to see where she's going next she likes to sing she likes to dance all the stuff that we didn't see her do or all the stuff that we didn't think was possible she wants to do all of that and she even says she wants to be a doctor because she wants to help people too so that was a, a good thing to hear from all of this too that she wants to help people yeah. who catch you when you fall Daddy. that's right <laughs> i'm gonna catch you it was actually a year ago today i was 18 weeks and we first found out that she has down syndrome and at the same time we also found out that she does in fact have a heart defect. When we were first referred to uh, Dr. Cochran, he told us that he was from Mont and he's a cardiologist that switched over to here. We just thought it was the best case scenario. Previously, if you wanted to see a University of uh, Michigan uh, CS Mont Children's Hospital specialist, um, you needed to travel to Ann Arbor. The collaboration between uh, Trinity Health Oakland and CS Mott Children's Hospital has allowed us to bring pediatric care, world-class pediatric care, out uh, into the community and make it easier so that families can um, not need to travel for hours in order to see uh, the specialists that they need to see for their children. And the other uh, great thing about Everly, and this is a great uh, aspect of our care, is that after careful consideration, we realized that Everly did not need to be delivered um, out in, in Ann Arbor. It would be safe uh, for her to be delivered out in our, in our hospital here. Um, we took care of her uh, in our NICU after she was born. Um, and, and we're able to keep close tabs on her, uh, you know, understanding that if she needed higher level of care, we could always um, utilize the resources in Ann Arbor, but we did not need to um, do that right away. Having Dr. Cochran being a doctor with Mott Hospital as well, closer to home, makes it a lot easier for us to make it to appointments and a lot easier to uh, plan how to get out here on time. And You know, this is a confusing diagnosis. There are a lot of implications. Um, parents are, are frightened, you know, this is something that you're not expecting when you're having a baby. Um, and our job really is to come in there and, and make things okay. There are um, lots of things we can do. The science is continuing to be advanced to where there are more and more things that we're able to, if not fix, at least palliate. You know, our goal is to give all of our children that we care for um, as normal quality of life as possible. That was the hardest thing we've ever had to go through. A lot of resources there that have helped us, um, nurses staff, doctors, everything was amazing. Um, they explained a lot, kept us updated. Did, they did amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we want to extend a big hail to all the little victors and their families who've graciously shared their stories with us. And to our community for your generous support of the life-changing work the teams at Mott are doing every day. Thank you. On behalf of the leaders and best at CS Mott Children's Hospital and all of us here at WDIV Click on Detroit, Happy Thanksgiving.